I think at some point we all get so caught up in the hot horology or so laser focused in on specs that we forget this hobby is also supposed to be fun. And having a watch that makes you smile is sometimes all you need. Which is why we're going to take a step back from all of that and check out the Citizen Mickey Aviator, also known as the BV1088-08W. I actually saw this one months ago when I was on a cruise. I looked at it and immediately thought it was cool. I just love the fun and whimsical nature of it. That, and unlike a lot of other character watches out there, where it's really just a giant figure on the dial, this one actually incorporates the watch elements into the design, where the small seconds is acting as a propeller. Now, of course, I didn't actually buy this one on the cruise, because back there, I think they wanted full MSRP or maybe even above that. And I'm not an idiot. So I waited, and eventually I saw that Amazon had this on sale over Black Friday last year. At which point I jumped on it just to have it on the channel. In terms of specs, you're looking at a mid-sized watch. But for some reason, Citizen is listing this one as 40 millimeters, but it's more like 43. And heck, the clean bezel is 41. So I don't know where Citizen is getting 40. Lug to lug is 49, and total thickness is a mere 10.3 which is pretty thin, but that really shouldn't be a surprise since this is a quartz watch. Water resistance is 100 meters, it has a 22 millimeter lug width, a flat mineral crystal, and it's fairly lightweight at 76 grams on its leather strap. And as for the movement, it's all powered by a solar eco drive movement. Now, personally, I would prefer it if it was a little smaller, like 40, maybe 41, but considering this is made for the general public, it is a decent size. Yet even at 43 millimeters, I still found it fairly comfortable to wear on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, mostly because it's lightweight and fairly thin. Plus that lug to lug is only a tad longer than I usually prefer. So it's not top heavy and it stays exactly where it needs to. And that way you can watch the time go by as you're waiting in line at Space Mountain. Lightning lane, my ass. Now, even though it is a tad wide, the case has a nice sleek profile to it with a nice brushed finish across the entire watch head, except for the polished clean bezel, which I think helps draw your eyes right to the dial, acting as kind of a frame or a portal for it. One interesting aspect here is that there is a beveled edge on either side of the case, but rather than being polished, it just continues with that same brushed finish. It still adds some highlights to the case shape, but it's not overly obvious. Over at the right, you have an aggressively knurled crown which is easy to get a hold of and use. Then on the back, it's a standard closed case back, complete with a stylized Disney logo. Just in case you were confused about what this whole watch was about. Now, as I said before, the crystal here is mineral, and that may be one of the few real negatives I have against this one. A scratch resistant sapphire would be vastly preferred, but when it comes to Seiko, when it comes to Citizen, it's pretty hard to find at this price range. Although Citizen does seem to be shifting and offering more of it these days, but just not here. On to the dial, which has an excellent fun design that's rather simply executed. So nothing is applied, everything is painted on. Yet at the same time, I think it's done in a way that gives it a classic timeless sense to it. The dial itself is a glossy eggshell white, which is then accented with black printed Arabics around the dial. Except for over at that 8, which has been replaced with Mickey and his plane zooming in and swooshing by the 9 and 7, pushing into the dial just enough so that the small second hand looks like the plane's propeller. When it comes down to it, this is a really simple thing, but I also think it's a really cool way of integrating the character, as well as still leaving a very functional and readable watch. Where you have this silver metal train track chapter ring sitting on top of that dial, right at the outer edge. Plus you have the minute indicators on the raised section heading towards the crystal. Then there's sword hands sitting on top of all of that, which have a silver framing that helps them clearly stand out from the white dial underneath. Although I think the hands would be better if they were a little wider. But overall, it's a clean, easily readable and fun watch. And one thing that I appreciate, at least compared to a lot of the other character watches out there, is that this one, I guess you could say, is a little adultish. 
where it's fun, but not necessarily silly. Uh, now, they could have also probably ditched the date with this design, but date is good to have on an everyday watch, and I think it is generally preferred by the public. And before I forget, another thing that I really love here is the color choices. As the brownish plane clearly stands out from the black Arabics, yet at the same time kind of has this retro steamboat willy feel to it. And then with the train track chapter ring, I mean, a train track chapter ring is a classical watch design element. But in this case, it also reminds me of a film reel. I'm not sure if that was completely intentional, but I think it works here. So simple, clean, cool, fun, but not necessarily completely silly. As for the loom, well, considering it's a casual watch, I'd say it's pretty good. The Citizen has great loom. People always say Seiko is the best, but I think Citizen has a leg up on them sometimes. The design isn't anything to write home about, but in terms of longevity, it keeps up with a couple of good divers. The strap wise, and again, for its price, I think it's good. It comes with this brown, genuine leather pilot style strap, where it has rivets near the watch head. It's a little stiff at first, but it does break in nicely. In the long run, for me, if I wind up keeping this one, I'll probably swap it to something a little more interesting, like this hybrid strap. But in general, I think you'd have no problem keeping this strap on the watch until it wears out. With regard to the price, MSRP here is 325 US. But if you look around, you'll easily find them popping up closer to 250. And sometimes even less than that, just depending on the sale. I think back in Black Friday, it was more like 200. Which overall is an okay value. Now, it would be better if it had Sapphire, but a Citizen Eco Drive around 200 bucks is pretty okay. And especially for a licensed property, I mean, unless they're clearing these things out, you're not gonna find them for much less than that. I mean, the mouse needs his cut after all. But ultimately, with a watch like this, it's not so much about value as much as something you want and something that you think is fun. It's not hard to find a watch that's gonna have better specs for the same price or even less. But again, that's not really the point here. Obviously, a Mickey watch isn't going to be for everyone. For me, I actually grew up about an hour from Disneyland, so I went there frequently. And not just as a kid, but even later on in high school and college. Because back then, they actually had some really good weekday ticket deals for like 20 or 30 bucks. So it wasn't really unheard of to ditch class and take a road trip up to Anaheim. So I wouldn't say I'm a Disney adult, but I definitely say I have an affinity towards the mouse. Yet even with that, I've never really been one who wants to be a billboard for a brand. There are some exceptions, but I've never really liked having giant logos splashed over things I wear, which is another reason I really love this particular watch. That compared to a lot of the other licensed properties out there, like I said, this one is a little more adult and a little more subtle. Subtle enough that you could easily wear it every day, Putting a smile on your face every time you look at it, well, no one else is the wiser. So I like it, and I think it's fun. And the only reason I might not keep this around is because I already have another Mickey watch, and I'm not sure my collection is big enough for two. So I might need to think about which one I actually like better. But what do you think about it, the Citizen Aviator Mickey? As usual, let me know down below, as well as let me know which of these two watches you like better. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. Like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, just whatever. Do something that helps the channel. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.